In our morning rounds, the new normal for allergies. Pollen is expected to pile up early this year. Higher temperatures, more rain, and El Nino winds may contribute to a perfect storm for the allergies. Now, the experts believe that climate change is making the season about three weeks longer. Oh, joy. It's also becoming more intense. Dr. Nita Ogden is an allergist and a spokesperson for the American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. Good morning and welcome back Good to the morning. table, Dr. Ogden. Thank you for having me. This will be the third year in a row that you people have come and said that this is the worst allergy season ever. How is that possible? I know we hear this every year from our patients almost complaining, but this yeah. is the new normal. Um, Allergists largely attributed to climate change. Actually, next week is World Allergy Week, and the focus is climate change and the effect on pollen season because what we're seeing with climate change is warmer temperatures, higher carbon dioxide levels. This is leading to earlier seasons, longer seasons, and actually allergenic plants are very receptive to those changes. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing robust plant growth and pollen growth, and this translates into high pollen counts and terrible seasons all around. So what does a person suffering from allergies do? A person with allergies has to be aware that this is going on and be prepared. The number one thing is to start early. Um, like I said, allergy seasons, we're seeing people come in as early as early March, uh, which is really early compared to years ago. So people should be armed and ready. Um, they should see their allergies well before their season, and they should have their medications in place. People are also now experiencing more severe symptoms. People may have asthma or skin reactions to pollen. So to be prepared and have everything at your disposal is really number one step and then to control your exposure. I joked with you when you're coming out that I've felt mine already. I want to say New York is the worst for allergies, but it's, <laughs> it's not. not. No. Where are the worst places? Well, actually, um, the list of the worst capitals just came out and the number one place is Jackson, Mississippi, um, Louisville, Kentucky is there, and Memphis, Tennessee. So we're seeing that these southern states, they have the most ideal conditions for pollen and Syracuse, that, Syracuse, is on the list too. Syracuse did too and that they think is probably because people are going to see more allergists um, and buying more medications that's what they base these lists on but those southern states they have sustained warm temperatures they have sustained sunlight humidity and they have a great diversity of pollen producing plants so that creates that pollen storm that makes people so miserable and some people are more susceptible to allergies than others why is that there's a huge genetic component with allergies so if your parent one parent has allergies, you have up to a 50% chance more likelihood of having allergies yourself. Mm. Both parents, that goes up to 70%. So allergies definitely have a genetic component. However, in this new normal environment, we're seeing adults for the first time complaining of allergies in their 50s, in their 60s, and, and they're annoyed. I can blame my parents, though, yeah. for mine. Thanks, yeah. Mom and Dad. So, so Thanks, we'll see, they'll see you. you next year? Yeah. Definitely, yeah. year after year. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Nita Ogden. Thank you.